Hi, everyone. I'm Christy. I do communications development work from Chelsea's Hope. And actually, Nikki is the one who brought me onto the team. But could you tell me more about what you do with the organization and why you are involved? Hi, Christine. Um, yes, my name is Nikki. I'm on the board of Chelsea's Hope Lafora Children Research Fund. Um, I came on board because I'm a parent of a child with Lafora disease and wanted to help out and, and be an advocate. Um, so I got into the market marketing role and am now the director of family support. So I help a lot of families around the world. Can you tell me about your effort to raise awareness of Lafora on social media? Well, I decided to raise awareness because there was nothing at the time and I felt that I needed to educate and I was so shocked because it was such a shocking diagnosis that I knew there was other families out there that had the same feeling and the desperation and of understanding, you know, you, you get a, a pretty, it's a terminal diagnosis. So I know we haven't exactly explained what Lafora disease is, but Lafora disease is a terminal neurological degenerative disease um, that, that comes on in adolescence um, it, with symptoms of seizures and then cognitive decline. So it's like childhood dementia um, until they slowly, slowly stop being able to walk and talk until they pass away. And that, that can take about 10 years. It depends. Some, some go in a few years once the symptoms start. So it can be a very rapid decline and sometimes it can be a bit slower depending on the genetic mutation of this disease. So it is um, autosomal. It is genetic. Um, both parents have to be carriers. Um, and I was just, it was beyond my wildest dreams hearing this diagnosis and I was searching everywhere and I couldn't find information. So I went, you know what? You know, I had a marketing background. I wanted to educate and I wanted to to teach people to pick these symptoms up because, you know, if you're not from the medical field, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know there's yeah. a neurological issue. Even though she didn't have any neurological issues before, it's only once the seizure started because it mimics juvenile myoclonic epilepsy. So you get misdiagnosed initially until um, things get, get, keep getting worse. So I opened up a social media page called Lafora Initiative, found other families around the world that way, and we all connected um, and got in touch with the Chelsea's Hope Lafora uh, Research Fund and um, joined it, got on the board and said, I want to help. That was my aim, you know. I, um, I can't just sit here and watch my child when he to find therapies, get into clinical trials, um, know the best medications that help. Um, because it's hard to watch your child suffer. It is, it's really hard. And um, I, I just was desperate. I needed to needed to help. Um, my daughter is still unwell. i um, not sure if you're following her on social media, but um, her TikTok did blow up by her having her first tattoo. I know a lot of rare diseases. This is the case so many people don't even know it exists. Um, and so now you've got a much larger audience because of this TikTok. Yep. Can you tell Tell me more about why you made it and yeah. what they... Well, TikTok was small in the beginning and I didn't realise how it went out to such a broader community. Um, and I just thought my family were watching. That's all, that's the only people that were watching. So I didn't really explain the video um, that well. Um, but Angie went and got her first tattoo. And um, she had been begging for a tattoo for like two years. And I'm like, no, nope, no, you've got to wait till you're 18 or you've got this and got to that, just trying to like, no, no, no. And then I just went, you know, what the hell, you only live once. You know, she wants a tattoo. It was her birthday. We went, let's go get a tattoo. Um, that week she had just started having um, a new medication. It was making her nauseous. And so I brought two nurses along with us. And so this is that moment. Why was she reacting not as happy as maybe we would expect? She was in shock. She could not believe it. It finally processed that she was actually getting her tattoo. You know, as much as she knew, because of the dementia, it's like she keeps forgetting she was coming for a tattoo. So it was like, oh, my God, I'm finally getting the tattoo I always wanted, you know, that she was begging, begging me for two years. Um, so I think it, it was her mentally processing it and then she was so happy but then she was like, there were so many emotions going on at the same time. It's like, oh, what does it feel yeah. like, you know? Um, yeah. So, yeah, it was to me a very special moment to see her reaction that way. Mm -hmm. So both the ladies there are her nurses um, and they came mm -hmm. to help out and I was the one recording. What has this response been from viewers? Because I see, you know, hundreds of thousands of likes, 
a lot of new comments, even though you shared this last February 2023. Also, many saves. That, that's got to be a little overwhelming. Part of it is good. Part of it, um, it does worry me the way people do think and the way it's a bit of troll, you know, the trolls on there, you know, not they're not educating themselves or just reading first before they comment, read and see what it says ab about this video. Because of course, as I said, when I first put it on, I just thought my family were watching. So I didn't really explain that she has a disability, um, that she's been wanting this tattoo for so long. So people sit there and they think, oh, you know, she's just dramatising the pain of having her tattoo. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and they think it's really funny. Oh, imagine her in childbirth. You know, it, they, they were quite horrible things that they said. Mm -hmm. um, they also, a lot of them don't approve that there is um, a Muslim lady in, you know, in there thinking she's a tattoo artist. I mean, she's not holding the pen. She's her nurse looking after her patient um, and doing God's work. They just think it's quite funny um, that yeah. she's acting this way. Um, but And hence why um, it made me more passionate of educating. I want to educate people so they can understand. Like it just, it fuels my passion for advocacy. She's five years into her diagnosis and they usually say, 10 years, so we could have another five years if we're lucky. She is declining, so that brings a lot of um, anticipatory grief because you're always anxious. Yeah. You know, every time she has a seizure flare or a big dementia flare or, you know, she's lost weight or she's not eating because she doesn't eat, she's formula fed, but sometimes she wants to eat with us socially. Um, so when she declines or something changes, it can be very upsetting. The seizures, the epilepsy part is, you know, um, there's a lot of stigma around epilepsy and I don't know if you um, have seen the, the short film Under the Lights. I'm not sure if you're able to show a little snippet of it. Yeah. It's a kid who wanted to go to prom and, you know, he's, his epilepsy, he's got photosensitivity. So... He can't go where flashing lights are. And, and that's exactly how Ange has been. You know, she, for two years, we booked a Sean Mendes concert. He came and she couldn't go because of all the flashing lights. <sighs> couldn't take her to the concert. Yeah. And that broke her heart. It broke her friend's heart. She was going with all her friends. So we had to sell her to yeah. And it was so upsetting for all of us. Um, you know, her friends cried when they were watching Sean Mendes. You know, she should have been in those seats and there's these other people. Right. Seats, um, because she can't because of the photosensitivity issue that, that can trigger yeah. her. And um, this short film shows that so well. So there you go. That's um, Miles Levin. People need to see what people with epilepsy go through. Um, so please go to Under the Lights. Um, Seedandspark.com is where he's actually, if you, you can go and make a pledge. We are at, at the deadline, so please go and have a look. He has to get to his goal of $200,000. So please go and make a pledge. Tell your friends, your family about it. Let's stop this stigma on epilepsy. Let's stop the trolls on TikTok, you know. Or we should really just like extend kindness and sympathy towards everyone, especially before commenting in a TikTok, on a TikTok video as you've experienced. Yeah. Um, but what are some other ways that people who, you know, find your account, learn about La Florida disease, are listening to us right now can help? Can help by advocating. They can help by even donating. You know, we it costs a lot of money to to start clinical trials to find cures. We want a cure. We want treatments. Um, and is on. It was the first one to start the first treatment for Lafora disease called Val One Two Two One, an enzyme replacement therapy. Um, and it has it's made her very strong. And but of course, it's only slowing down the disease a little bit. But it's it's still not a cure, and that comes with funding. Yeah awareness, um, being kind, help. You know, um, it is very constant. If you know someone or if you, you know, offer a hand. Do you need dinner for tonight? I can make you dinner. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, can I just sit here and read a book or hang out with her? Um, and that just gives, you know, the parent a bit of free time. Right. Um, it's just all, it's all different acts of kindness that you can do. Pay it forward. Pay it forward in donating yeah. your time, in educating others, um, in educating your children. If you're a parent, educate your children mm -hmm. about epilepsy and seizures so they don't bully or pick on. Right. That's happening. Right. 
and not just sit there and laugh if they were to have a seizure, actually go and help. Call the ambulance. Yeah. I mean, I think Angela's friends are beautiful. They had a birthday party, so we went early beforehand. She goes, look, we've got a DJ. We're going to have the flights low and we're going to have softer music, you know, more chilled out music for the beginning so Ange can be included. So Ange went, oh, you know, and then we left and then they pumped it and then they flashed them the lights and, you know, that was so <laughs> Yeah. So she could actually go to a birthday party right. with all her friends at her age. Um, so there are ways around it, um, and that's if people know about it and are educated and, um, right. and the aim of creating awareness. Yeah, and I, the Under the Light short film, which is already out, is um, beautiful and moving, and I know the director shared how uh, people have reached out to him and say, like, I feel so represented or you know, I've learned so much. And so the full-length film would do so much for awareness. I, I agree with you that awareness will lead to better support, better funding, and just yes. more people opening their hearts. It's like it's you've got to see it to believe it. Well, this is right. we need a movie. This is why we need awareness. If people yeah. see it, they'll believe it, and things will get easier for everyone. Yeah, the other documentary that has helped is Fighting the Rare by a Spanish researcher who studies La Pora disease. Him and his brother, who is a video producer, interviewed myself and another family and um, a lot of the researchers and doctors um, that specialise in La Pora disease. And that's a really um, interesting way of understanding the challenges we're all having with finding treatments and cures um, because in the lab there's been a lot of breakthroughs but it's trying to get those breakthroughs into humans to to find cures and 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 to slow down and stop children suffering so there's yeah there's a lot happening um please look out for them please yeah. watch them so you can be aware and educated and if you are able to help in any way please if it's telling someone tell three people today you know <laughs> Yeah. That's it. Or if you want to volunteer and help, if you have a particular skill set that you believe you can help us reach a, a broader audience, please mm -hmm. get in touch with Chelsea, yeah. with Christine, or myself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got a volunteer interest form on our website, and all those videos are also linked on the website. Um, Fighting the Rare is has its own site. is on Dr. Duran's YouTube as well. That's that's the video I was sharing with my family and friends. It's 30 minutes. Take 30 minutes and watch it. Get a crash course of our world. Thank you, Nikki. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Christine. Have a great day.